Hi folks, it's Switchback. I have seen some mixed information out there about proper use of a tourniquet out in the field, including someone recommending removing one in the field. And that has prompted me as a backpacker and an ER nurse to make this video because it's really important to me that accurate information is out there. And I would encourage anyone watching this to consider taking an in-person hands-on wilderness first aid or even better wilderness first responder course if you have the time and the finances to do so because a little knowledge really can save a life especially somewhere like the back country where help is hours away. So a tourniquet should be a part of everyone's first aid kit. Ideally two of them and I will explain why in a little bit. Never put one in there still wrapped up in the plastic because if you're genuinely in a situation where you need it, trying to open this, especially if your hands are bloody and they're wet and you're freaking out, not easy. It's hard enough to do this with your hands dry and not under duress. So open that up. Dispose of your waste properly and carry two. Practice using one on yourself before you're out in the back country trying to figure it out under duress. Of course, don't necessarily cinch it down all the way when you're practicing with it. In extreme cases, someone can bleed out in as little as three minutes. And an extreme circumstance is when a tourniquet is appropriate and extreme circumstances unfortunately do happen. Again, practice putting it on yourself because that is actually the most likely circumstance. Even if you're hiking with a group, sometimes people will inchworm while they're, while they're well, where they will. Good Lord, I cannot talk. Where they will meet up at trail junctions and then kind of end up spreading out again and then meet up at the trail junctions and spread out. And so you may be hiking alone, even if you're backpacking with a group. Carrying it on your person is really the safest way to go because you may not be able to get to it wherever you have it stored. A high quality tourniquet will make or break your situation. One that won't hold up and maintain that pressure when it's really cinched down is completely useless. You want a genuine CAT tourniquet. CAT stands for Combat Application Tourniquet. There are many of these knockoffs on Amazon and elsewhere that just don't hold up the same way. These can come undone after they're placed. They can snap internally after they've been put on. They can put pressure unevenly. And while a cat is more expensive, this is a life-saving device. I paid about $30 a piece for these two. And I'll put a link in the description for where you can find yours. You can even see the difference. Like, this is really trying to be a knockoff of the cat here. It's even got this textured bit here, the red tab. A very similar windlass. It has a similar time band on it and a similar clip. But I can feel the difference in how strong those are. You can tell the difference in the Velcro. You can tell the difference in the internal ribbon here that cinches down with the windlass. Even the windlass itself, you can see the difference in the thickness. The old advice gave parameters for when to loosen or completely remove a tourniquet but those parameters have actually been shown to increase mortality, meaning more deaths when trying to loosen one of these out on the trail. A tourniquet, once applied, should really only be removed in a medical setting under the care of a provider. I, as a nurse, would never give circumstances under which to loosen one or remove one because the risks are incredibly high and need to be managed in a medical setting. Quite frankly, there is no circumstance under which I would recommend anyone ever loosen or remove a tourniquet in the field, ever. The risk of leaving it on could potentially mean losing a limb, but removing it could mean losing life. Let's start with when to apply a tourniquet. If you have been trying to stop some heavy, profuse bleeding, you've been putting new bandages on top of the saturated ones and putting a lot of pressure on it and it's just not stopping and potentially maybe even pulsing, and it is a life threatening bleed. This is the only circumstance under which you should apply a tourniquet. Do not apply a tourniquet if the bleeding can be stopped 
any other way. Do not apply one for a snake bite or any other kind of an injury other than life-threatening bleeding that cannot be stopped other ways. They should only be applied to arms and legs. Any bleeding from the head or the trunk will not be improved with a tourniquet. Let me explain a little bit about anatomy and how a tourniquet actually works. Arteries in your extremities are carrying blood away from the heart and are under high pressure. Arteries are usually very deep and that is for protection because when they bleed, they bleed heavily. Most of the bleeding that needs to be stopped with a tourniquet is going to be arterial bleed. Veins will bring that blood back to your core. They operate under a much lower pressure and they tend to lie closer to the surface. Because of that anatomy, that's why when you say get a blood draw done and they put that tourniquet on, on, that blood will pool in your arm because they're not cutting off the blood flow going out to your through your arteries but they are blocking that blood flow coming back from your veins those are not tight enough to cut off that arterial bleeding that can lead to a fatality this is part of why proper use of a proper tourniquet is so critical. It has to be able to completely stop that arterial blood flow. Now to attempt to stop bleeding in the first place, you're going to apply pressure with a dressing, with a bandana, anything you can get your hands on and put a lot of pressure on that. Ideally elevate the limb over the level of the heart because this will reduce that blood flow. If those dressings get saturated, you're gonna add more on top. Do not take off the ones that are saturated. If this is not enough, then try wrapping something around the wound and adding extra pressure onto there like an Israeli bandage. You can even use a windlass, which this is what a windlass is, to tighten that bandage around the wound to add some extra pressure, but it would not be the same amount of pressure that a tourniquet would apply. An Israeli bandage or quick clot will also have what are called hemostatic properties, which means that they have materials in them designed to help stop that bleeding. But if that is not enough, then that is a situation for a tourniquet. And again, only for life-threatening bleed. To properly apply a tourniquet, remove any jewelry or clothing that is going to be at or below where the tourniquet is. The tourniquet really needs to be applied directly to bare skin. It should go at least two inches or five centimeters above the site of the injury and never over a joint. So if that two inches is at the elbow, you're gonna go above the elbow. High and tight is the name of the game with a tourniquet. This is the wrong one. I want the other one. Yeah. Tighten the tourniquet as much as you're able. You should not be able to get fingers in there. And if you can, then you need to tighten it again. Then use the windlass to tighten it down even further, ideally keeping that windlass to the outside of the body. Tighten it to the point that it is a very painful situation for a conscious patient. And if you are helping someone else, explain to them that it is going to be very painful and it needs to be tightened until that bleeding stops. Secure the windlass to maintain that pressure and getting enough pressure is crucial. Crucial. Make a note of what time you applied that tourniquet as rescue teams will need that information. If you have a pen with you, there's a spot on the tourniquet for that time. If one tourniquet is not enough, and it may not be, then you need to apply a second one at least two inches above the first one and repeat the same process with that. If you do not tighten this enough, you are actually increasing the risk of a fatality because that venous blood flow can't get back, but that arterial blood flow can get out. So anything that could even get back to the heart is not getting back to the heart, but any bleeding that's gonna happen is even worse. The tourniquet must completely and consistently stop that blood flow. So what exactly are the risks of removing a tourniquet? Well, there are several. Toxins will build up in the limb and releasing the tourniquet will mean sudden blood flow to the limb, returning all of those toxins to the vital organs. There is also significant risk of sending a blood clot to the heart, brain, or lungs and of course that the bleeding can resume. If you don't have a tourniquet with you, you can use something that is non-stretchy that is at least four centimeters wide, something that can be cinched down with a makeshift windlass, which can be a very strong stick or even a trekking pole. Belts are generally too narrow and too stiff for the job, and so they can actually cause more tissue damage and are less effective at 
stopping that blood flow. Paracord or rope are even worse and again, are ineffective and will cause a lot of damage to those tissues. Now, if a situation warrants a tourniquet, it is time to request medical assistance. In that case, a satellite communicator or a personal locator beacon is the tool of choice. To learn more about what these are, what the differences are between them, and what would be right for you, then check out this playlist here. Be sure to like and subscribe if you got any value out of this, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe out there. Bye.